Apple decides to discontinue the iPod after 21 years. I've never owned an iPod. I used to be an iPod hater. I was an Apple hater. Back in those days, uh, I just, like, you want to talk about overpaying for an MP3 player? There's all kinds of MP3 players that you can get, and I got them. And I got the different smartphones before the iPhone came out. But it was the iPhone, around the time of the iPhone, when that got announced, that I think I bought, I bit the bullet, and I was starting my own business, graphic design, web design business, and uh, decided to purchase a Mac Pro, which was very expensive. All of Apple's products are very expensive. But the thing that I learned after buying that computer... After years of years of being an Apple hater, I used to build my own computers with Windows. Would go to computer fairs to buy the parts cheap so I could build my own supercomputers. What I realized when I spent a bunch of money to buy a Mac was that they worked so good. And that once a year, I didn't have to do the thing that I had to do on my Windows computers. Because every Windows computer I had, I had to completely reinstall the operating system and everything else because of viruses. Viruses, viruses, viruses everywhere. And it was a pain. Windows would crash. There'd always be problems. So once a year, I'd have to do a complete refresh. And ever since I got my Apple computer, not only did I not have to reinstall everything every year but uh didn't have to pay for antivirus but also the hardware lasted a long time and now all i own is apple products so i never got to use an ipod and i'm not surprised that they finally discontinued the ipod i mean it had evolved into what is now, I think, the, the most recent or the last iPod that they created was the iPod Touch, which is basically an iPhone without the phone functionalities. And I have multiple iPhones that I use for things that are not phone. I hate the phone aspect of my smartphone. I use an old refurbished iPhone 7 to record this show. And to stream when I live paint. And also I can, I guess I could listen to music on it as well. But I use my phone to listen to music or my iPad. I edit everything on my Mac. And the awesome thing about Macs, not only, you know, the downside is the price. Okay, the price. But they hold their value very well. In addition to that, they're very reliable. And they come with software that has allowed me to produce podca thousands of episodes of podcasts without having to spend a penny on software. I have used GarageBand to edit over like multiple thousands of episodes using GarageBand. And additionally, I've used iMovie to edit thousands upon thousands of videos either podcast videos or even my making of videos for my paintings using nothing but iMovie iMovie and GarageBand come free with Apple products and are the only editing software aside from Photoshop that I use so uh you know great products I like the proof that anybody can change. I used to be an Apple hater, and now all I own is Apple products. It is insane. It, I mean, so you, you can change out there, people. You can change. And the catalyst for me changing was the iPhone. Because it was like I had used my phone before the iPhone. I think I had, got, I had started doing the PDF phones or PDA phones professional digital assistant phones where you could put they had a calendar in them and you could like some of them you could browse the internet some of them actually had color screens but i had the trio 
which was like a big bulky thing, had the QWERTY keyboard on it. But I could go online, I could load music. I remember, I remember ripping Fight Club and running it through software that would chop it up into files that my phone could play, my trio could play. And I remember taking a bath one day, watching Fight Club off of my tiny little phone. And then the iPhone came out, and it was like, oh, it did all of the things I wanted it to do. It was finally a phone that was designed for phone. Like, so many of the smartphones before the iPhone, you had, like, a stylus. Like, I remember friends had, like, the Windows, the had smartphones that had, like, Windows loaded on it. And you had a little stylus, and it was basically, like, a, uh, the standard Windows desktop and icons. Like, it functioned as a desktop computer which is horrible form factor it for a handheld device. And the iPhone was designed specifically for your fingers and your thing. So that was the catalyst for me becoming an Apple fanboy. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the iPod, I remember, like, I was selling electronics when I was still anti-Apple at Costco, and we would have people come in, and I would sell them on other products that we didn't even carry like i people would come in for an, an ipod i'd be like you know you could get an mp3 player that does the exact same thing with more storage for like half the price and i would send people to best buy uh i just i i hated i you know it was just and i, I think part of it was the fact that like i didn't i growing up poor i always bought the cheapest thing you know, that's why I learned how to build my own computers because I never had enough money to like actually buy a new computer. So part of the reason that allowed me to become an Apple fanboy was disposable income. And also being able to make payments on debt, being able to go into debt to pay off Apple stuff. But, uh, yeah, I'm still a huge fanboy and it's not surprising that they're gone. I mean, you don't need an iPod anymore. Every single smartphone, I mean, most people don't even store their music on their devices anymore to begin with. Everybody's streaming stuff through, like, Apple Music or Spotify or whatever, or, or the Amazon one. So it's just the reality of how we can consume music is completely different. But uh, it is. it was the product, I think, that, that turned Apple around in a lot of ways. Um, I mean, one of the products, their iMacs, I think, kind of brought them out of bankruptcy. And then the the iPods in, like, the early 2000s were, like, you know, an early way to get MP3s on your phone. And, but at the early iPods, like, you had to have a Mac computer, which I think was another reason why I didn't like Apple. It's like, oh, I can't, like, because I couldn't afford an Apple computer, let alone an iPod. So if I got an iPod, like, I can't plug it into my Mac computer or my, my Windows computer. But eventually they came out, and you could, you could hook it up to whatever. But, uh, yeah, so I've never – it's hard for me to mourn the loss of a device that I never owned. But I can respect the, the device for what it became. It was the first popular mobile device. I mean, you want to talk about – a trendy piece of electronics. It, it brought the, the nerdy, tech-only type of culture into the mainstream. It made it cool. Similar to the iMac. When the iMacs came out and they are all colorful, it, like, made the thing that, like, only nerdy techs were into, it made it popular and cool for everybody. And, uh, you know, being cool is uh, what life is all about. So anyway, and also Steve Jobs, by far one of the best CEOs to sell a product. Like his, I've said it before, I'll say it again, his keynote speeches releasing new products were emotional to watch. To see like the way he's able to sell his products and that, that, that classic line of like, oh, one more thing. Like you think he's done with this sales pitch of all the new things they're coming out with. And then he's got this one surprise. Check this thing out. This is going to change the future. 
completely different than what like a Mark Zuckerberg is trying to do today. Where Mark Zuckerberg, way before he announces his augmented reality glasses, he's predicting that it's going to be an Apple type of of game changer. It's like you can't do that. No. Steve Jobs didn't do that. That's not how Steve Jobs was so successful with with selling his products to the masses. He had confidence in it and he surprised everybody with the release. It was always a surprise. I'm horrible at surprises. I can't I'm I'm bad at releasing the products that I make like and I in no way have followed in the footsteps of of Steve Jobs. I remember being emotional when Steve Jobs died. And I watched the day Steve Jobs died. I went to go see a movie with my girlfriend and that movie was 50/50. And for those that don't know what that movie is, that's a movie where Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character gets cancer and you know what steve job died steve jobs died of cancer on the day i went and saw 50 50 so you want to talk about making a movie hit different went and saw that movie great movie joseph gordon levitt great actor that's just a really fun movie great movie um and then i remember going home and hopping on to the live streams all the podcast live streams where people were telling their stories about steve jobs uh in memory of him so anyway rest in peace the ipod not surprising actually more surprised that it's st- it was a product that was still around anyway uh but uh congratulations apple for that kind of being the the product that that led to the iphone in a lot of ways led to the iphone new episodes of the ray taylor show come out every single day subscribe on youtube and everywhere our podcasts are found binge the full week over at inspired disorder.com slash plus Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com and follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.